So I have accidentally and successfully completed some sewing war crimes in which my bodice lining is just being zipped up instead of laced because I can't find any of my lacing supplies. So this is fine. This works. This is fine. I totally planned it this way, right? Does anybody believe that? I don't know that I believe that. friends and welcome to another video. This is part two of how I, Elle Woods style, made a Worth ball gown in 10 days and it covers the bodice. What, like it's hard? All jokes aside though, uh, I realize that this is not a reasonable time frame for people to work in and you should not expect yourself to do the same. But I digress. Let's get into the video. You guys might recognize the couch behind me and that is because I am at Christine's house and she has laced me into my S-Bend Edwardian corset and today it's happening. It's happening. I'm going to figure out this bodice, I say, um, filming poorly, blocking my face, cutting my head out of frame. What do you guys expect from me? No better, obviously. But look at this couch. Isn't it great? Cut my face off again, naturally. So Christine just taught me an amazing hack. I have never actually done uh, fish darts before because this is my first time sewing Victorian. Also check out all the weird ink stains on my fingers. It's great. But so basically you poke through all the dots in multiple places and then you use a handy dandy thick Sharpie with three C's. Remember three C's are required and you mark the dots and then you go through and you trace them later and then you pin them. And it's great. It's great. That's a piece of fuzz that, that looked like a bug. It's a piece of fuzz. Do not worry. Um, but yeah, no, this is, this is very exciting. And I was about to do, I, I don't know what my plan was. It was, my plan was no plan, but this is so much better. Here's the first mock-up. Um, I made it out of this like flimsy, like paper patterny stuff. Say hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. Oh, we got tippy tappy feet of pups, but they're in the hallway, so you can't see them. I got this and we realized there were some critical errors in how this was. So I cut it out for the 30 inches on the waist and we were puppy and we were 29 inches and it was still too small. So I ended up sewing um, with a half inch allowance at the back instead of all of this. Then I added a whole heckin' amount to the front to make up for all of our crimes because there were many, but we did it. to how I am doing my uh, pattern and the design for the bodice. So basically I have now the pattern that I have like altered to fit me and I've cut it and like I have all of the lining over there. It's all ready to go. 
But before I put that together, I am also just plotting out where the actual designs go on the dress comparatively. So mine are not going to be exact to the dress because my back is a little broader than what the dress is, but I wanted to keep the design itself in scale to the dress. So that's what I'm doing. And so right here, you can see that I can see through this paper. So I'm just gonna trace the design. And I like marked out my seam allowances to make sure that I keep you know the design like within the allowances and all that and then i taped it to here and then i'm going to trace it on and then i can also cut out the applicator much Huzzah. so the side front and the front as you can see outlined there the line here down the center is the center front and it'll be mirrored so these guys are going to be draped so i sketched out approximately where they should fall based off of like the pattern that's on them and once I put together the outside and I'm going to assemble the back pieces when I also assemble the outside because the back pieces are the same, then I'm going to uh, play a fun game called I wonder where these pieces are going to go and I'm going to attempt to drape them on myself and do that. But as you can hear by the sound of me tossing paper to the side, um, that's all for tonight. Um, I did end up switching the pattern up a little because as I started to do this, I realized that it did bother me that it didn't match the dress exactly. So I was like, might as well do it as exactly as possible, you dumb, dumb, dumb. And so here I am doing it as exactly as possible. It's fine. Why am I like this? So to simplify my bodice assembly, I am putting together the back pieces both as like flat line layers. And then for the front, I'm going to put together the um, inner lining shell and then sort of like drape the fashion fabric over it to maintain the lines in the actual garment. The one thing I haven't actually figured out is how I'm going to get the front to close because um, while I know that um, this gown has back a back closure, I cannot get into back closure things myself. So um, that seems incredibly stupid to me. So I will not be doing that. I need to dress in a way that I can dress myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a line of boning in the center front and do a lace up front and then have like the front panel lap and pin over that. And it's not going to look quite as accurate. There's gonna be a little bit of gapping probably no matter what I do with closures there. I'm probably just gonna, for now, since I'm short on time, do the 18th century, just pin it with straight pins plan. But since, you know, um, you can see in other uh, couture bodices of the time that they have very visible lapped closures like that. You know what? If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. I am also doing this rather astonishing thing in which I technically double the work but save myself from mistakes by basting these into place first because uh, we all know that your girl just goes for fast, not efficient, but in this case, since I want these designs to line up and it's going to bother me a lot if they're not, I'm going to baste into place first, open, iron, check placement, and if I like the placement and the alignment of both the pieces, then I will vinyl sew into place. We'll see how long this lasts. So I finished uh, putting in all of my bones um, in a seriously uh, surprising twist. I started on this side and worked this way and I actually ended up uh, hand cross stitching all of them in correctly. Uh, for some reason, this just sparked a lot of joy to my little goblin brain. Ooh, that, that guy's curving the wrong way, fixed it. But yeah, so my, my brain was just like, we like doing this, let's do more of this. So I was like, all right, I guess, like I'm not mad. This is actually useful of you brain, thank you. But yeah, now I'm gonna do the dreaded next try on because if this doesn't work, uh, your girl is screwed. So I have accidentally and successfully completed some sewing war crimes in which my bodice lining is just being zipped up instead of laced because I can't find any of my lacing supplies. So this is fine. This works. This is fine. I totally planned it this way, right? Does anybody believe that? I don't know that I believe that. So we've come to the state of any project where I have slowly forgotten to tidy up after myself and my desk my entire table is just like a mess of stuff but uh good news we have like the initial um potential draft for the side piece and the um applique pattern for the side piece so i'm about to go to bed but what i'm going to do tomorrow is i'm going to duplicate this pattern cut out both appliques cut out a second one of these applique and then see if i can get this attached to the bodice in a way that 
looks correct. And if I could do that, that would be lovely because then all I have to do is figure out the front. Yay! So I got into the zone a bit, but quite a lot has happened. First off, I cleared off my table. So it was only the things that I need right now. Secondly, I actually fully made the, uh, one of the side panels and I have the other one over there with the iron resting on it. So this is how I'm actually making sure these appliques don't run away from me um, without being satin stitched. I'm just literally putting my iron on the highest setting that none of these fabrics melt and just keeping it there while I do other tasks. And now I'm about to use my like funky little setup and cut out the applique from the fourth center panel section. And then I have to figure out how all of this goes on and closes. <sighs> I'm probably gonna take a nap before I figure that out because that sounds like a lot and I don't wanna do that or think about that, so yeah. Okay, so what I did is I took the bodice piece and I like folded over where the lines are supposed to go and I pinned it in place onto the center front. All of this stuff gets gathered in like this and sits like at the titty up here. So that's all fine. So the good news is that I got it to line up. Um, the bad news is though, that I did not put this side panel nearly positioned this way enough or rather positioned this way. So like, see, it should be, it's coming down at this angle, but it should be coming more like this because as you see, this is where the center front wants to fall when the pattern is now correct. And that is um, not quite correct though, because uh, <laughs> that's not the center front. That's like an inch. Actually, I could tell you exactly how much that is. No likes about it. That isn't like an inch and a half off of it. Nope, that's, that's two inches off. So love that. That's great. I'm gonna take a break and come back to this because what I'll probably have to do is recut this piece here and make one that angles correctly. But what I'll also probably do is to make my life simpler, I will just keep this piece on because it's already here, it's basted it in place, it does what it needs to do. So I'm just gonna like try this on again over my stays to make sure it's still fitting correctly and like pull this around and make sure I cannot get that to be the center front. And as long as that's the case, which I suspect it will be, then I will begin the uh, very fun process of trying to put a new panel to position these lineys correctly. So now that this is pinned in place, you can see a little more of what it's going to look like eventually and why, you know, obviously, well, you could already see previously why that placement was wrong. But one thing that also could happen is that if I try this on and realize I have a lot more room in my waist than I thought, which I think I might because I think um, when I was sewing this on Christine's uh, machine for the um, mock-up, all of my seam allowances were like solidly um, half an inch, but I think I actually sewed them um, at like 3 8 because um, my machine's lines are a little bit smaller. And I noticed this before, but I didn't really register it. And when I tried this on yesterday again, it was like a little looser on the waist. So maybe, maybe I'm hoping that that's the case because if that's the case, then what I can just do is since I did like a cheating zipper in the center front, I could just take this zipper and the bone out and reposition the zipper to go like that and basically follow this line of centeredness as it is currently. This was all a lie. As you will see, I end up going for, in typical NAMI form, the most simple solution. But first, a nap. Okay, so this is where I left things off last night. I officially uh, tacked this edge down to the bodice itself, so these both are there. I also added a little dart into the center front to reduce the area that this uh, point piece has to cover. And I also went through and I um, folded in the edges on both sides and I do have to still tag this, the, these down on the edges. But what I did was I did the uh, gathering at the top to like mimic that line. And then when I actually, so my plan is for now to just like pin this on. And um, yeah, in the meantime, I've got quite a bit of the scrap fabric left. So what I'm gonna do with it is I'm just gonna sort of like patchwork this area in right here and right here so that any sort of like overlap or rather lack of overlap is not like affected, if that makes sense. So basically what it'll do is when it's like this and 
together, any part that isn't covered in the center by this piece is also going to have green on it. And then obviously I do have to like, you know, hem these edges still and like sort of wrap it back and tack it back and all that jazz. But that's gonna be tonight in the hotel activity. My task now before I leave though, is going to be a fun one because I realized that I forgot to make a pocket, which is just crimes, crimes against humanity. So I'm gonna make a pocket real quick, a quick and dirty pocket and because I am trying to do everything at once and also eat my lunch before my flight. And I, I also- get that. Could you try again? And also try to ignore Siri. I am going to be um, probably not filming this because are you guys surprised? I filmed so much, honestly, this is a record for me. So this is where we have ended up on the bodice before my flight. So as a, like a note of what we have done, I'm going to zoom in here. And by zoom in, I do mean just move my chair closer to this and sit in it but so we have sewn on binding onto all the edges so i can flip this and hand tack it into place we've also added this um green fabric here to cover up the portion of the point that wouldn't get covered by the bodice cover thing over there and we have to just hand tack all of that tonight and then hand tack the edges of that and then tack one edge onto this bodice and we are good to go. If I have time, I also want to add a hook to the skirt, which is rolled up like that. And that will go to the back of the bodice here that will hook onto the skirt to prevent the skirt and the bodice from like separating. So hopefully I'll have the time to do that. Spoiler, she did not. So I also finished doing all of the binding on the bodice. Uh, I haven't actually covered this part here cause that gets covered by this little centerpiece, but I did cover down here with extra fabric. Um, there's probably gonna be a gap in the design like right here, but honestly, uh, that's a problem for future me. Um, so before I sleep tonight, I'm just gonna tack these edges down so they don't flippy flappy up. And then tomorrow when I wear this, I'm just gonna pin it in place and then I, I'm ready to wear her. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's real. I'm so excited. Also, I'm covered in little bits of green fuzz. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and watching this. I appreciate you so very much. This is the part where I say like, comment, and subscribe for more updates on my channel. Next week, I'll be coming to you guys with some content about how to make a costume fit multiple purposes. And I'm very excited to show you guys that. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you guys again next week. I am working on uploading every Mondays and uh, well, so far we have two in a row, so we'll see how long that keeps going. Uh, thank you guys so much. Have a great day and leave a comment below talking about whatever you're working on right now. I want to hear about it. Tell me, tell me all of it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Y'all want to know the best part about this gown? It's this.